Okay, so we are actually going to, in this video or next set of videos, I don't know how long it's going to take here, we're going to actually uh, design an op amp from the scratch. Now, I'm going to design, a, quote, what I call a PNP version of this. Um, the simulation assignment is going to require for you to draw, d design an MPN version of it. Now, we are going to just kind of do what I would call is a, a generic design. We're not going to sit there and, and go through what the exact computations are to figure out what the gains would be. Um, we could measure the um, large signal gain um, once we have the design completed, um, but you know, we're not going to sit there and, and really sit and design for those parameters, although you can do that. Um, the other thing is when we simulate this, um, we're not going to actually easily be able to determine what the common mode rejection ratio is um, because of the simulation tools we have. Now, there are additional packages that we could purchase with Cadence that would allow us to not only um, design this op amp, but then also have it so that they would do what's called S-parameter measurements and we could measure input and output impedances and, and common mode rejection ratios very easily. All right, so let's get started here. Well, the first thing we, we know here, let's write some things down we know we're going to need. We're going to need the differential amplifier. We're going to need current sources. We're going to need a Darlington pair for our input impedances. We're going to need a gain stage. And then we're going to need an output stage. OK. so. Those are the things we're going to need here. Some of this is we're going to get right away here. So let's um, see here. I'm trying, I have the circuit in front of me, so I'm trying to see how best to draw it here for us. So as I said, I'm going to do a PNP design here. So I'm going to start down here, and I'm going to have to scroll the screen in a second. So I'm going to have a PNP transistor, and then I'm going to need to hook this up into a Darlington pair configuration. And then I'm also going to do my differential amplifier at the same time. So if we want to think about this here, um, We can think about this being either, you know, I don't know which one it would be, but we can think about this as far as like, okay, well, this is, um, I think this one's actually going to turn out to be the negative input. I don't want to put B minus there. I'll just put negative input, I believe. Um, we'll easily be able to determine that once we have it built. And then, so what else do I need here? Well. I know that this is going to need to be a differential amplifier. So I'm going to start And this would be my other input. So for now, I'll just say instead of positive input and negative, I'll say input one. And input two. And just because I'm being a little anal here, let's draw that line down there just so it's a little bit more symmetrical here. 
Now, we have to remember here, because I'm using TNTs, um, where I'd be placing my current sources for biasing and where I'd place my like loads for my current gain. So if I think about this, what I would be doing here, if we go back to our regular kind of differential pair here, I'd have these resistors here because these are off the collectors. And then this is going to be connected to my negative power supply. And then we'd have up here some current source and this would be a PNP current source that I would design and this would be connected to V plus now I'm just going to leave this as my current source right now um, I'm not going to actually put in my current here yet um, part of the reason is is because I don't necessarily know the resistor values or anything else like that um, one thing though, so let's see what we've managed to cross off the list here. So we've managed to cross off, I've got my Darlington pair, and I've got my differential amplifier. I don't, I mean I have current sources, but I don't really have them there. I haven't drawn the circuits for them. So let's go ahead and continue on here. Because what we are going to do here is I've got this here, but I'm going to take those resistors away. So, and I'm going to write it down here. So instead of using RC, we will use an active load. Remember, we talked about active loads in previous um, class periods. Uh, and so it has a couple advantages to us. One is we then don't have to put additional resistors there. Um, and the active load actually, in some sense, gives us a little bit better performance as far as getting gain out of that first stage. We can get a little bit more gain out of the differential amplifier. So to put that in here, I'm actually going to do initially what looks like um, the fact that I'm just putting in another current mirror here, and I'm going to draw it here in a second, and we'll go through it here a little bit. the minus and then now this looks at first glance like a three transistor current mirror um, it's not because we don't have any kind of um, our ref here um, for setting, you know, any kind of resistor here for setting the reference current. Um, but this does give us an active load here. Um, and we can see that there's definitely going to still be um, some resistance essentially that we're going to get here. And we could go to the small signal model here if we wanted to. And what I mean by the small signal model here, let's even kind of sketch it and then we'll just erase it because we're not going to spend too much detail on it here. So let's look here um, and I'll go ahead and label these just so that I can draw my small signal model with them. So Q2, let's just draw that one in first. So we know we're going to have an R pi and then a GM V pi. And let's go ahead and throw in an RO1. I'm sorry, this is the second one, RO2, R pi 2. And now I'm definitely doing that because these might not all be the same. Um, 
Now, I think about it, Q2 and Q3 should have the same thing for r pi, but Q1 is not necessarily going to have that. So then let's see here. We know that this is my base. This is the emitter down here. So, well, the emitter of this is just connected straight to ground. So this would be connected to ground. But then the base of this is connecting to the base of Q3. So the base of Q3 would have an R pi 2, or not R pi 2, an R pi 1. And then whoops, there would be current source GM, V pi, this should be a GM1, a GM2, and this should be V pi1, V pi2, but I, I'm going to ignore putting all those labels in. And then an RO1. And the emitter is still connected to ground. Now, this collector here is connected to, um, I'll even say it's, uh, maybe I've drawn it back where it's here. This is the right hand side of the, um, I'm sorry, the way I have this labeled, this should be R pi three. These are the third ones that I've done here. GM. So this is the right hand side here. So I've got basically this being connected up to right there. Now I do have to add in Q1. Now that's the one where I have to do a little bit more thinking here. So there is the resistor between the base and the emitter. Okay, so the emitter of this is connected to the base of this, so I've got, this is the base, so there would be an R pi 1 here, and then this is connected to the collector of um, the base emitter, so this is connected to the base here and then the I'm sorry the emitter is connected to the base and then the base is connected to the collector of Q2 and then the GMV pi goes between the collector and the emitter okay so well let's see here where is the emitter connected to the emitter is connected to the base. So I've got here current source like this, and this would be GM V pi one. And then, because that's the emitter, and then the collector is connected to V plus, which for AC would be ground. So it would actually, if I fix this up a little bit here, another way I could do that is putting in here and I'm not going to label it, but that would be the current source then there. And then this here would be the left hand side output. And we can clearly see that there is going to be some load resistance here. Now we could go through and do the small signal analysis and figure out exactly what the load resistances are going to be. But I will tell you right now, just because of these GM V pies and everything like this, we're going to wind up with some beta plus ones, you know, times some R pies. 
without going through it, we're going to wind up with that. So, so we're actually going to get a fairly large resistance there for our um, effective resistance, I should say, for, for our gain purposes. All right, but as I said, we're not going to go through all those details. So I know I'm just erasing this all, but we're going to get back to the design here. And actually, this is a good place to stop maybe this video. So what have we done so far? We've got my Darlington pairs sitting there for my high input impedance. I've got my differential amplifier with an active load. And I'll go ahead and take these labels off now. And then we've got my current source, which I haven't drawn the transistors to build that current source. 